Hello and welcome back to another episode of my MotoGP 20 career mode and we are here for the 10th round of the MotoGP season at the Kimi Ring so this is probably not going to go very well for me because this is my worst track I would say on the game obviously because I don't really know it. I don't think the AI are the most tuned at this track so it could give us an opportunity but it does seem like my bike's really not going to suit the track so this bike really goes against the characteristics of Kimi Ring so I'm guessing we're probably going to struggle so we'll advance to the week then week 28 of the season we've got a notification on the technical staff management front so it's a new candidate for the chief engineer so once again obviously it's the same name since that bug is still present I believe that is something to do with the save file I might reset my career mode after this season to try and fix it I'm not 100% sure on that yet I'll try and bring all my stats across so they're exactly the same so it uh, seems that there's no uh, no changes or anything like that so 10 years of experience in the MotoGP world, specialised in frame management, previous experience with the official Aprilia team. It's actually not bad. Uh, we do lose points overall, of course, because he's really bad on the engine, but on the frame and the electronics, he's not bad. But we'll stick with who we've got for now. See, I know the frame is what we're focusing on, but I want to just keep the highest synergy that we can. And uh, we've got a very, very high synergy right now with the staff we've got, and the very, very expensive staff. So we'll have a look at the championship standings then. If you haven't seen the previous episode, I do urge you to go check that one out before I spoil what happened in the previous one. So we brought the championship lead down to 39 points to Mark Marquez because he crashed in Assen. He did a fantastic recovery ride, really. Didn't end up finishing too badly uh, when I finished, I believe it was fourth place. I finished behind Quattararo, Dovi and Rossi. So Quattararo moves himself up into fourth place in the championship then. Uh, Dovi is actually closing up to us, he's only 12 points down on us now, so uh, we're not even safe for a second in the championship at this point, but me and Dovi are both probably focusing on Marquez, and to be fair, Quattararo, he's only 65 points back, yeah, Vinyal is only 66, so they're not, they're not miles off. It is quite a big gap, but it's, I think it's still, they're still in the realm of it, and they're definitely within this fight for second place, that's for sure, even if they're not in the fight for the lead, so... Yeah, it could be a really, really close second half of the season. Obviously, the summer break after this round at the Kimi Ring. So with nothing else to say or do, then we'll head into Kimi Ring, into Q1, and hopefully we are competitive at this circuit, but I really don't think we're going to be. So we're here then in Q1 at the Kimi Ring. And I know this track a little bit better now. Obviously, I've played it quite a bit. Well, not a massive amount, but I've played it more than I had when I did Moto3. Obviously, I barely played it at all. Same with Moto2 as well, I've, I've played a little bit more than then, so I do sort of know the lines now, I, I'm getting used to the track, but I just feel like the bike's not going to work very well here, and the AI are either going to be too fast or too slow, because obviously there's never a race here, so they don't quite have a very good benchmark for the lap times. Uh, so in this session then, it's Danilo Petrucci and Jack Miller back in here, so it's been a while since those guys were in Q1, well both of them were in Q1 with me, so Alessio Spargo getting through then. Uh, same with Morbidelli and Nakagami. It is nice to actually have dry weather for once. Obviously, there's been a lot of rain-affected sessions, a lot of rain-affected weekends. It's good to have a fully dry weekend at a track I'm not 100% familiar with, because obviously I want to try and bed myself in with the track. So we can actually do some fast times right at the beginning of the session. So we'll head straight out here then, try and do a decent lap and see if I can get straight through. Seems like the pits are updated as well, because I don't think the Simply Cola logos were on the, uh, the pit walls like that before. Uh, there was a new patch today, so I'm guessing that's probably what it's added, the uh, pit walls. So into the last corner then. It's a very tricky little last corner trying to fire it out. The bike doesn't seem to turn that great, obviously. That has been the bike's main weakness this season, is the turning. I did have a few issues with the stopping earlier on, which is still a thing. Mir set goes to the top of the session then with a 44.5. I did the rewired trick before I cut to the uh, being on track. So the first sector then. It does kind of seem to suit the AI, I think, over previous seasons, if I remember. The AI are always faster through the first sector. The bike doing a massive wheelie out of there, that's not helpful. I did see a comment saying I probably should have upgraded the uh, anti-wheelie instead of the frame, which I, I kind of agree with you to a certain extent. But I can ride around the anti-wheelie, and that's not a problem consistently like the turning is. So into turn 5 then. 7 tenths off Mir's time already, and we are struggling with the stopping a little bit again this circuit. Obviously there are... Well, there's that one hard braking zone, the rest aren't too bad. It's a fairly flowing track in the middle sector, it's just knowing, you just got to pick the right line. So it's a little bit, probably a section we'll struggle with is that sort of S section there. And then trying to hold a tight line through some of these, so it, it definitely doesn't seem like the bike is suited for this circuit. So we're almost a second off of Jarmir's time now. We do always seem to improve quite drastically over the course of a weekend at Kimi Ring. So if I don't, if I don't talk too much on some of the qualifying laps, uh, you'll know why, it's because I'm trying to bed myself in with the track. I don't mind talking uh, a massive amount over this first lap, 
because they're usually just a bank of lap, but if I'm really not showing much footage of the other laps, that'll be why. So we've got him really, really wide into turn 12 then, so that's going to cost us even more time, I assume. We'll have a look at this intermediate. Yeah, well, one and a half seconds off, which, to be honest, is not the end of the world at Kimi Ring. It does take me quite a while to get used to it. Like I said, obviously, I am learning the lines a little bit more now, but I'm by no means no expert at this track. I don't like it that much, if I'm honest, either. I think even if I did know it, I probably wouldn't be the biggest fan. It's not the worst track in the world, but... Yeah, I, I'm not a not a huge fan of the layout. So up towards the line then, two, well, I thought it was going to be two seconds off, 1.6, so we'll go for a couple, well, we'll go for one more lap in this stint then, and then perhaps I'll put a bit more fuel on and uh, go for a bit longer in the next one. So two tenths off then in the first sector, four tenths away in the second sector then, so we are improving. So we're nine tenths nearly down then on the AI. So we're nine tenths away then in the third sector, so we are losing quite a bit of time still to Mir. So up towards the line then, Nine tenths off, so we didn't lose any time in the last sector then, but that's only good enough for eighth place right now, so we do need to try and improve the lap if we're going to go through into qualifying two, and we really, really need to. So out then for another attempt at doing a qualifying run here at the Kimi Ring. So Miller with a 44-1 then. So we're four tenths down in the first sector then. 1.4 seconds off in the second then, so we're even slower on this lap then. So we're two and a half seconds off in this sector, and the AI behind them actually caught us up. So actually, I'm going to let them go through and follow them on the next lap. So in the first sector, personal best then. Second sector, six tenths down. So 1.1 off the time then. That is a personal best, apparently. And up towards the line then. What's the time going to be? Oh, 44.7, which is sixth on the grid. So we've got enough time for one more lap, but we have got really marginal fuel. Seven tenths off in the first sector. Personal best in the second. 1.1 off in the third again. So coming up towards the line then. So unfortunately we weren't able to get through into qualifying two at this event. But I'm a bit less annoyed than I am normally because I don't think it was down to the bike. I hadn't found the limits of the track yet. It's really hard to actually get into the flow of this track. I probably should have put some free practice sessions on and really got used to it. But 16th on the grid then it's going to be, so another comeback ride it seems, but this time not really down to the bike, it's just down to the fact that it's Kimi Ring and uh, I don't know the track at all, I don't know the lines, I know obviously I said I'm starting to learn them, which I am a little bit, but to be honest I found out more following Bang Naya what I was doing wrong, we did go quicker than Bang Naya, so that is definitely a bonus. Uh, we're behind Laquona then, so Laquona in 14th, so hopefully he can try and bring home some points then, but the two factory Ducatis going through. The track with a massive straight, it's going to happen. <laughs> the two Ducatis are going to go through. Doesn't really matter. Jean Mir then in third in this session. But if we want anything decent then results wise, we're going to have to push very, very hard off the start. We're going to have to be extremely aggressive. So we're down here on the grid then with Quattararo on pole. Marquez in second position. So I'm hoping Quattararo can keep him behind, but every other time it's not seemed to happen. Uh, it'd be nice if Marquez could have another crash in this race to uh, try and compensate for our terrible terrible starting position. I think it's going to do the thing where it shows us twice as well because it showed me third and there we go. Yes, it's going to show me again doing a completely different cutscene which is quite quite funny. You do one set of animations and then instantly you're doing a completely different set. So I've gone for a soft front and a medium rear because I've never done a MotoGP race around here so I have no idea how it's going to be. I mean I've done them online in like three lap races and stuff but the, the track doesn't get picked. It's not a fan favourite and yeah, I can see why. I can definitely see why. But yeah, we need to try and make a good start. So I've put half a lap extra of fuel in the bike just to try. So we can use a little bit more power mode too. So, without any further ado then, we're going to get straight into the race. And I really do need to get a good result here. So Quattararo then. Please keep Marquez behind you. And Rossi, please dive up his inside. Another front row for Rossi. Looking pretty good now in the season. But waiting for the lights to go out. Lights out and away we go. We've lost the position to Zarco, so it's been a very, very bad start, actually, as we go towards the first corner. Oh, clip Zarco's rear a little bit, but we haven't picked up any damage, luckily. As we go through, then, turn two, this long left-hander. Try and gain some positions on the run into turn three, holding a very tight inside line there. A few riders wide on the outside, trying to get the power down out of this corner. Yes, we have. We've done it quite well, so up into 15th, gets up to stream. Oh, Jarmir, Jarmir is pushing me towards Polis Bagro so that I can't get the drive. Mir really trying to make his way through the pack. But I made sure then he almost went into the back of La Corona. There's a bit of payback as we break then for turn five. To hold another tight line here. Back down to power mode one now. I filled up a little bit of extra fuel for that reason. So I could use a bit more power mode two on that straight. 
So as we flick the bike right up the inside here. Oh, I've gone way too tight onto the grass. So super busy looking at what Nakagami's doing, but we're trying to ride underneath Nakagami now. Can we get it done? I think we can. So we're up into 11th position then. Is he going to try and run it around the outside though? He might dive up the inside to this right-hander because they like to do that. No, he's actually done it pretty well, but we're trying to get the cut back on the inside to the next one. Really trying to go up into this top 11. No, for now he's still in front of us. So we're going to have to wait another couple of corners. We just absolutely rammed him out the way there. A bit of an aggressive move, but he left a bit of a gap, so I went for it. Rin's quite far down the order in ninth place there. Morbidelli looking for a way around him. I think that's Petrucci just ahead of them as well, breaking for this turn 13, where the AI are quite weak, actually, although it, on this first lap it's not too bad since the uh, bike's so heavy with fuel. But up the inside of Morbidelli, so back up into the top 10 at the end of the first lap, so pretty good start once again. We've gone in way too wide through the last corner. We've got the run on Rins. We're past Rins now. Marquez leads, Quattararo second, Rossi third. So once again, Marquez leading a race I'm struggling in. Here we go, then we're looking for the switch back on... Petrucci up the inside then, up its 8th place. And we've got the run out the last corner as well, we seem to get a better exit, so Marquez go quite a bit quicker than us. In the such stream of Vinales then. Looking for a move into turn 1, up the inside, can we get it stopped? Yes we can. No, well, he's got back around the outside, so it doesn't really matter, so we're struggling to find a way around him here. Vinales looking back at us then. So he knows we're there. So up into 6th place now. Behind Miller, who apparently is in 23rd place. So quite what's going on there. I think there might be some sort of bug. Hopefully that resolves itself. Because I don't want Miller to lose out on some good points. Well, I'm not really too bothered. But it's just a little bit weird, isn't it? Another bug that we found in the game. I suppose these things do happen from time to time. So here we go then. We've got a pretty good run on Jack Miller. Looking up the inside. Rossi De Vizioso are going at it in front as well. We've dived on Miller then. Probably affected our exit out of this corner. We're up into sixth place now. Marquez continuing to lead right now. Oh, here we go. He's on a Rossi. Out of nowhere. But I think he's going to hold it around the outside, though. But we'll get the switch back through turn nine. And I think he's going to hold on to it for now. But we'll definitely be trying to pass him later on in the lap. So here we go then, again, closing right to Valentina. But Valentina's all over the back of Davizioso. So is definitely struggling at this point in the race. We're going to try and get the tight corner. Can we pass both of them out of the last corner? We've passed Rossi then in the 6th street, Davizioso. 44-8 on that lap then. But we're going to try and pass Davizioso as soon as we can because there's actually a bit of a gap ahead. But I think maybe with a decent pace, we might want to close that in. So here we are then at this point in the lap once again. Trying to get on the inside of Davizioso. They just lose so much time. On the flip-flop there. So up into fourth position now. Which if you told me I'd get up into fourth position. I wouldn't have believed you. Quattararo with a 44-6 on that lap then. 45-0 for myself. So maybe we won't be able to close them in. Quattararo another fastest lap. And he's actually catching up to Marquez. So hopefully able to pull a move on him. Out of the last corner then. Up towards the line. About to start the final lap. 44-7. So we have picked up the pace now. But it's just not enough to catch these guys. As we come towards the last corner, then Quattararo couldn't quite get past Marquez. So Marquez is going to win once again here in this career mode. So Marquez wins here at the Kimi Ring. I'm going to come home for fourth place, which from 16th on the grid was an excellent, excellent race. So then Marquez beating us by 3.4 seconds. So actually very, very close to us at the end. We had very, very good pace throughout the race. In fact, if you look, my fastest lap was the same as Marquez's. So yeah, unfortunately, it was one of those things where the starting position really hampered us. But honestly, I couldn't go any quicker in qualifying. It wasn't the bike. It wasn't a bike problem. It's just I couldn't get used to the circuit. But obviously, following the AI for the entire race, I picked up all the lines, found out where they were slower. Then just started taking those lines when I wasn't with him and I pulled away. It looks like uh, Miller did get uh, shafted out of his position because he's not on the front uh, page. So we'll have to go and have a look. Uh, so Quattararo in second, obviously then. Crutchlow third, myself fourth and Dovi in fifth. Vinales not helping his championship out in eighth. Rossi still on the front row but he ended up sixth. I suppose not the end of the world. So if we do go to have a look where Miller is. Yeah, Miller's last place, a minute 49 behind. I think we actually have seen that book before. I think we might have seen it with the Spagro before, I believe, in one of the previous episodes. So I think that's just something that happens then, maybe, where their lap just glitches and they go a lap down. I don't really know what it is. Uh, Oliveira got one point for the team then, so that's always nice to see. So then the lead is now back out to 51 points, with me finishing in fourth position. But 51 points, half a season to go, that's very achievable, I would say. There, There is 10 races left. So actually, if I win every race... I'm not necessarily the champion because Marquez could still win by a point.
But I think if we consistently fight with him, maybe hope for a mistake or two, I think it's still possible that we could go for this championship, especially now that we're going to have upgrades coming from now on. Uh, especially the next race, we're going to have a frame upgrade as well. So the bike should be a bit better. We should be able to fight a little bit more with Marquez. Obviously, we got a little bit further away from Davizioso again, who was closing up to us. But Quattararo is rapidly catching back up. He's only 19 points away from me now. Vinales pulling a little bit further back. And Crutchlow getting himself started again in this championship with a very good podium. In the team's championship, then, not much changing. Just a LCR Honda Castrol passing Pramac. But that's probably just on account of uh, Miller's glitch. So that's quite unfortunate for him there. In the Constructors' Championship, then, we're actually tied on points with Ducati now, because obviously I beat all the Ducatis in that race. Yamaha are now 20 points in front of us both. Uh, they're probably on the pursuit of Honda. They're, they're realistically the, the best bet to beat Honda, because people like Quattararo can actually match Marquez on a fairly regular basis, really. So then, there was no crashes or anything in that, so nothing to analyse. So we'll head into the career hub, because obviously we didn't get on the podium, and we'll have a look at the reputation and stuff, and then we'll end off the episode there. So then, obviously, we missed the qualifying objective, but overall, we gained 6,900 reputation points this weekend, which takes us up to 364,500. And you love to see it, that salary, the 32,863 credits going in the bank every single time, which takes us up to 478,813 credits. So then, the frame is finally done. The, uh, the upgrade on the frame is, uh, is now done. It'd be nice if it told you how long it'd take for these other upgrades to do, because otherwise I actually would probably consider doing an anti-wheelie upgrade now, uh, just to try and help out with the wheeling. The engine's fine, it's it's great, it's fine on the straights, so we're not losing time there particularly, so it doesn't matter. But I don't want to like put on the electronics if it's going to take ages to do. Usually they're not too long, it's only 1,500. So if I put that on and then add every staff member to it, what's that going to take? Three weeks then. It's going to take three weeks then to put all of the staff members on here, which actually should take us... Uh, yeah, it'll be done by Bruno anyway, I think. So... Yeah, so that, that's fine. That upgrade will be on the bike by Bruno. So we'll have two upgrades then coming in for Bruno. The frame upgrade that we've just got and that electronics upgrade. Although we could buy this upgrade as well and just get it. So that'll take... We have to put at least one staff member on there then. So if we take one off... If we take the worst electronics guy off here then, that'll take 25 weeks to do. I will add more on. And then this will still take three. I didn't even realise you could do two upgrades at once. I've been playing this game since it came out. I didn't realise you could do two ones. I thought you could only do one. Uh, so what about if I take another person off? So if I take the best frame person, that'll take 13 weeks now. And that'll still take three weeks, this one. Okay. I feel like a bit of a noob for not even realising you could do two sets of upgrades at a time. I thought you could only do one at a time, so I just put all the people on there thinking that made it as quick as possible. But actually it doesn't. Once you get a certain amount of people on there, adding more makes no difference. So you can assign them elsewhere. So we've got eight people on, on the anti-wheelie upgrade. And that's the fast that'll go. That, that won't go any quicker than three weeks. So I may as well take four of those people, put them on here. I didn't even know you could do that. So that's quite cool. So we'll have one upgrade coming in for Bruno then. And hopefully one upgrade coming in basically straight after Bruno. After we put everybody on there. Because I've, I've sort of gave up now. Now that I've got one upgrade, I'll go for them all basically. Because we need to beat, start beating Marquez. I think half a season. We've done half a season on a non-upgraded bike. So I think uh, that'd still be an achievement if we can manage to win the title with that. So uh, that's what I'm going to go for now. Doesn't matter how upgraded the bike gets for the rest of the season. I'm not bothered. It's been a really challenging championship. Probably a little bit more than I thought. So I'm putting some upgrades on. It should be a nice, balanced championship from now on. So I hope you did enjoy that one then. Another good race, another comeback race. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a bit bored of having to come from the back, but it is fun fighting through the AI, uh, to be honest. It's just unfortunate that Marquez is always at the front. So this race, for example, I, I think if I'd done a 50% race or if I'd done a 100% race, I think I could have won. I had very, very similar pace to those guys. And I think I could have reeled them in eventually over the course of the race because I was actually lapping very, very quickly once I got into clean air, but... They were three seconds up the road, which I couldn't catch up. I was running basically the same pace. It was just three seconds for the last few laps after I got past Dovi. But like I said, I hope you did enjoy that video. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I hope you're all staying safe, and I shall see you in the next video.